Okay, so sets as trees. We have set contains, which we looked at already. Uh, probably worth tracing that one real quick. So let's just quickly see what happens when I create a tree with two at the root, one in the left branch, and three in the right branch. And then we'll ask whether it's the case that the set t contains the number three. Here's the trace. We look in the whole tree. Three is bigger than two, so we only look in the right branch. Three is three, then we return true. If we look up zero instead, then we look in the whole tree. We notice that zero is smaller than two, so we only look in the left branch. We only look in its left branch, and we didn't find anything. So we're done without ever inspecting anything in the right branch of the original tree. Cool. And adjoining to a set has a similar logic. So, the way we'll do this is if S is none, meaning we have an empty set, well then adjoining V to an empty set will involve just returning the tree that contains V. What else could happen? Well, it could be the case that the entry of S is V, in which case adjoining this v to a set that already contains it will suffice to just return the set that already exists. We don't need to add anything because it's in there already. Okay, now we have to consider two recursive choices and the tests for them are the same as for set contains. If s.entry is less than v, then we know we need to put v in the right branch. So what we're actually going to return is a new tree that uh, has the same entry at the top, because we don't want to lose any elements. It has the same left branch. The only difference is that it might have a new element in the right branch, because V is big, so if it goes anywhere, it will go in the right. So we'll call a join set three recursively on the right branch, passing in V to perhaps add it there. And the last case is, what if s.entry is bigger than v? Well, then we return a tree that still has the entry, uh, but the left set may have to change. And so we'll pass it in along with the value that we're trying to adjoin, but the right branch remains unchanged. So let's quickly get that same tree set back to 1, 3. And then we will try to adjoin to it the number 4. And notice that 4 ends up in the right branch of the tree that is on the right branch of the whole tree. If instead we put 2 in there, well, two is already in the set. And if we put one and a half in there, it would end up as the right branch of the left branch. If we put two and a half in there, then it would end up as the left branch of the right branch, etc. So it's always ending up as a leaf of the tree, but where that leaf is, is set up to respect the binary search tree property, that the root of any subtree has to be bigger than everything on the left, smaller than everything on the right.